Today is the 12th of April 2014 and uh, 12th of April 2014 is Jen Kosmonavtov. Ah, someone understands Russian and what does it mean? It's the day of the cosmonauts and why? 53 years ago, Yuri Gagarin was the first human being to travel to space. After one and a half hours, he descended down on his uh, parachute uh, in the steppes of Kazakhstan, and his name became known all over the world. Some thousand kilometers to the west, uh, uh, a young eight-year-old boy was listening transfixed to the radio and wondering what was going on. I didn't understand it, I didn't know it, but I somehow felt that it was really uh, intriguing and it caught me. And in the following years, when I watched what is today known as the race for the moon, I wanted to become an astronaut. Don't ask me why, I don't know why, but what is important, I knew what I wanted to do. And that is probably the key question here. I never though would have imagined that a picture like this one would be possible. And here, this is the crew of which I was a member which flew into space in uh, the year 2000 on board the Space Shuttle Endeavour. And the task that we had was to measure the Earth. So I was very fortunate. I'm a scientist by background to participate in a scientific mission with, by the way, a great crew. But why is this image really important for me? It's not because the person on the lower right is my face. Uh, there is something else uh, behind it. People believe, and uh, you will hear it again on the 28th of May, Alexander Gerst, another European astronaut, will launch to the space station, uh, that space is made or space flight is made by astronauts. And this is only partially true. Um, as a matter of fact, in our case, we had 300 engineers, scientists, technicians, who prepared the mission for a period of three full years. And without them, we would not have done anything. If everyone would have had my skills, I believe that the best what we could have achieved would be to roll out the shuttle to the launch pad and it would still stand there today without moving anywhere. Everyone is needed at the place where uh, he is in such a system. The astronauts come aboard, yes, when, uh, then when the astronauts are there, the cameras are there, they make the news, but uh, the key thing is, it is not only an individual effort, it is a team effort. However, there is a big caveat. Today the team is everything, it seems like it. And I had the privilege to participate in the last astronaut selection in Europe, and we looked in the team capabilities and we just heard a talk how important it is to have social interactions. Nevertheless, what counts in the end is you. A team is worth nothing if the individual team members do not participate in the tasks to their fullest capability. If you are a soccer fan, and I am one, and if I remember the last European Championship, Italy against Germany, a horrible thought. There comes a pass from Pirlo, uh, the pass slices the German defense, and Balotelli stands in front of Manuel Neuer, just by himself. Manuel Neuer cannot say, hold on, the team didn't behave as they should have. He, it's him, and he lost that battle, unfortunately, from a German point of view. The key thing that I want to make, it is, the individual, it is you who will make the difference even uh, in a team. Now, having said that, I need to quickly show this. Each crew develops such a patch, and there are many things that could be mentioned, but only one thing is uh, for this purpose today important to me, and these are the stars. Now, you might think, well, stars are there because in space are stars, you are right, but that is uh, not exactly what I am aiming at. You will not be surprised that I, as astronaut, am of the opinion that space is an important part on our way to the future. It is not the most important one, but it is a step that we should not neglect. And 
quote that we should not neglect, especially in Europe. Very important for Europe. The best symbol for our future that we can think of that, or that we could think of are our children. And therefore, the stars stand for the children that we have. Dom, our pilot, had two children. Janet had also two children. These are the four uh, that belong to us. Kevin had four. Mamoru had three. And JV, Janice Voss, was the only one who was not married. And we said that's a tricky thing to leave her out in this uh, symbolic uh, representation. So we thought we give her a rising star. Maybe the situation will change. Um, the picture is still the true today. So uh, she never got married and never gave birth to a child. Quite an interesting moment, I must say. Is there anyone here who has witnessed the shuttle launch? Or, ah, I am not the only one in the room. And I can assure you, I saw seven or eight from the outside, one from the inside, and it is almost more emotional from the outside. Because if you are sitting inside, uh, then you think you are in control. You observe all the gauges, you observe all the, uh, the instruments, you know that things are going well, you hear the voices from, count con from ground control, and uh, things seem to go normally. Um, seven seconds before actual lift of the main engines start, and all of a sudden the vehicle comes to life. It swings forward and then back, and when it goes, and you feel it very, clo uh, very clearly, and it goes back to the exactly perpendicular position again, then the solid rocket motors kick in. And when that happened, I thought, you haven't experienced that yet. I mean, that is really something. Kevin, if he would be here, our commander, he always comments that if the solids ignite, something very significant in your life has just happened. You just don't know how it's going to turn out. And a little bit, I must admit, it uh, feels like that. After eight minutes and 36 seconds in our case, you are in space and that image was taken roughly five hours after we launched. And why are these five hours uh, so important? We talked about Yuri Gagarin. The first American to really circle uh, space was John Glenn. And uh, roughly two years later, he orbited the Earth three times. And that took him four and a half hours, roughly. And after five hours, he was basically back on the aircraft carrier in safety. As I said, five hours into the flight, this image was taken. And uh, the, the point here is, after five hours, we were just about ready to go to real work and to uh, set up our instrument, uh, calibrate the radar system, to indeed start with the measurements that helped us to understand the, uh, how uh, Earth looks uh, three dimension in a three-dimensional way. You see, we are in the, uh, in the flight deck of the shuttle, look into the cargo bay, you see the antenna system, you see a mast that was uh, uh, extending 60 meters uh, out of the cargo bay, a very complex structure, but uh, the most important thing for me is this uh, blue-yellow line that you can see right here, uh, at the, which separates Earth from space. And you guess what it is? It is our atmosphere. 10 kilometers of atmosphere roughly look like that from space. You go and buy the thinnest sheet of blue paper that you can get anywhere and look at it directly from the side. And that gives you a suggestion on how the atmosphere looks like. Every life that we know of in the universe exists just in here and in a water layer that is not that much thicker below. That's all where life exists. Uh, Antoine Saint-Exupéry says it in The Little Prince, uh, you can only see well with your heart. Uh, the essential things are invisible to your eyes. And I never felt that this sentence is true as strongly uh, when I was up there. To give you just one example of what you can do with the data that we have produced, this is a scientific example. We are not too far from here. We are in Switzerland. And this is how well we knew the Earth 
in the re from a resolution point of view before. And we are in the season actually right now, melting snow. And you could see in the image that this, uh, the models to calculate how quickly the water would disappear from the region, would be drained from the region, was rather schematic. The water was going either north, south, or east, west, by and large. And here it looks uh, much, much uh, more realistic, meaning that we could predict, for instance, with uh, higher accuracy when the Rhine River would indeed uh, visit uh, Cologne. I mean, the old city of Cologne, indeed. And uh, not that we can prevent that from happening, but for the people who are living there, it makes a big difference whether we can really tell them when this is going to happen. Just uh, one example of what uh, these uh, missions are good for. You all know that uh, the shuttle period has ended, but that doesn't mean that human spaceflight has ended. And we are, as we are speaking, six astronauts are working on the International Space Station. Um, that is the project at least until 2020, probably a little bit longer. Nevertheless, there are uh, few things uh, that you should keep in mind. The time will not stand still in 2020. It will continue beyond that. And who will, they, who will make this future happen? This will be you. It will no longer be us. We can only prepare the way uh, for you, but you have to walk down the road and find new ones. And in order to see this image again, and you will see it again, uh, that means nothing else that humans will return to the moon. We do not know exactly when it is going to happen. My prediction would be somewhere in the 20s, uh, which means roughly in 10 years plus uh, from uh, today. We will see that humans venture below low Earth orbit. It doesn't mean that low Earth orbit becomes unimportant or uninteresting. It will stay interesting, but our mind is set to always try to figure out what is beyond what we know and what is uh, beyond uh, our horizon. So humans will go out uh, again. You will see this image again that, in my humble opinion, has probably the changed the way we look at us and at the world, the Earth, I should say, and our place in the universe, like rather any other image that we have seen in uh, the past. And finally, I would like to say that the appearance of man in space has indeed opened a new chapter. I am today 60 years old, and uh, the era of man in space is roughly of the same length. So I was fortunate enough to be born just before men went into space, and uh, even more fortunate that I had the opportunity to be a part of it. And uh, to be a part of it doesn't mean that you have to be an astronaut. I was just able to contribute a little bit, and I'm still doing today in a different role, uh, to make our future happen also uh, in space. And this will be a task uh, in the future for you. Thinking the future was when I entered uh, this building, uh, the theme for the RWTH Aachen, and uh, I think this is uh, more than appropriate uh, for uh, this setting here. Thank you very much.